What's the best way to prepare a wood sample for identification? I'm Frank Owens from the Wood Identification Team at Mississippi State University. In this series of videos, we'll teach you how to identify North American woods the scientific way with a small magnifying glass called a hand lens. Today, we're gonna to show you how to use a utility knife to prepare your wood specimens for examination. Developing good knife skills is vitally important to mastering wood identification, so please spend time practicing until you can make clean cuts. In video number two, we introduced you to some basic wood anatomy and the three principal planes of wood. Because anatomical features will help us distinguish one wood from another, it's very important to see those features clearly, especially on the transverse or cross-sectional surface. You can find the transverse surface on the end of your specimen perpendicular to the grain. When you look at it, you should see growth rings. Remember from our previous video that the transverse surface exhibits lots of anatomical features that we'll use to identify woods. So why is it necessary to prepare the transverse surface with a knife? Let's look at some pictures to figure out the answer. The image on the left is the transverse surface of a wood specimen cut from a saw blade. Can you see many features? I can see a few small holes and occasionally some light colored vertical lines, but the features are very unclear. This specimen would be difficult to identify in this condition. The picture on the right is the transverse surface of the same wood cut cleanly with a utility knife. Can you see the features now? Much better, right? Now I can see the pores and rays, those thin vertical lines, very clearly. I can also see the areas of light colored tissue called parenchyma, which were completely invisible in the saw cut image. We'll talk about parenchyma in a later video, but suffice it to say they're very important features for wood identification. Before we dive into knifing technique, let's look at two kinds of utility knives. The knife on the left has a trapezoid shaped drop in blade. The blades are double ended. When the edge on one end dulls, you can flip the blade around and use the new edge on the other end. When both edges dull, you can simply replace the blade with a new one. The knife on the right has a sliding blade. When the exposed edge dulls, you can simply break it off and slide it up to expose an unused portion. When there's no more blade to break off, you can replace it with a new one. Both kinds of knives can be used for preparing wood specimens for wood ID. The one on the left has a thicker, more rigid blade. The one on the right is thinner and more flexible. Knives can be chosen based on the density of the specimen or by personal preference. For denser specimens, I prefer the one on the left, but for medium or lightweight specimens, I prefer the one on the right. You can try both and see what you think. Before we dive into technique, let's take a moment to think about safety. Here are a few things to keep in mind. Knife blades are sharp and can cause injury if not used properly with caution. You should always replace dull blades with sharp ones as they are much safer. Do not let children use knives. Always wear personal protective gear, eye protection, thumb guards, etc. when using your knife, and always have a first aid kit available. Don't use knives alone. Whenever possible, work with a buddy. And finally, seek medical attention if a cut is severe. The cutting technique I use comes from a publication written by Dr. Alex Wiedenoft from the Center for Wood Anatomy Research at the USDA Forest Service Forest Products Laboratory in Madison, Wisconsin. If you search the author's name in the title, Identification of Central American Woods, you can find a copy online. The details of the technique can be found in Chapter 4. First, you'll need to learn how to hold your wood specimen. If you're right-handed, hold it with your left hand. If you're left-handed, do everything the opposite way. When you grasp your specimen, hold it firmly and make sure you can see the arcs of the growth rings on the end facing you. That's the transverse surface. Make sure that no portion of your fingers or thumbs is above the transverse surface. As long as no skin is above the cutting plane, even if the blade slips, you shouldn't cut yourself. Now let's learn how to hold the knife. Hold, hold out your right hand, palm up. Place the handle of the knife in the palm as shown in the image. Make sure the blade is pointed in the same direction as your thumb and the cutting edge is facing you. Then grasp the handle firmly. You do not want to grip the handle too far down as it is harder to control, and you don't want to grasp it too high as your skin could come in contact with the blade. Make sure your grip is neither too high nor too low. When you cut the transverse surface with your right hand, just as with your left hand, make sure no portion of your thumb is above the cutting plane. As long as no skin is above the transverse surface of your specimen, even if the blade slips, you shouldn't cut yourself. Use your thumb on your right hand to stabilize the cut. 
Make sure the blade remains as flat as possible. Don't make your cut at 45 degrees. When you draw the blade, try to use the entire length of the edge. Start at the base. As you pull the blade, end your stroke at the tip. This will ensure that you're slicing and not merely pushing the wood. Practice this until it feels comfortable and you can make a clean surface. It may take several cuts to reveal enough tissue to examine with your hand lens. Now you know how to prepare the transfer surface. The next step is to learn how to look at it with a hand lens, which we will cover in the next video. If you're interested in learning how to identify wood the scientific way, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. We'll be rolling out new videos over the next several weeks. In the meantime, if you have a wood specimen you want scientifically identified or in-person or online training for yourself or your company, please send me an email at frank.owens at msstate.edu. This video has been brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension, taking care of what matters.